everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room Channel and I've got a sewing tip for you. When I go shopping for supplies, I'm always on the lookout for things I can use as templates in applique projects. So let's take a look at a few of those projects. Seasonal cookie cutters are one of my favorites. So these are Christmas. This is a pack of them. You can get them like this off of Amazon. Here are some patriotic stars, hearts. These are also cookie cutters. Seasonal cookie cutters for Easter. Sometimes they come in a pack, very economical. More hearts, a Christmas bell. Up here, these are wooden templates I bought at Dollar Tree. And then I have other wooden templates down here that are butterflies, Easter egg, apple, bunny, cat, and even a pineapple. So when you go to stores like Dollar Tree or Joanne Fabrics and Crafts and Michaels, any of the craft stores, look for items that you can use as templates when you want to do an applique project. If you're not sure what I mean by machine applique, here are some examples of what I mean. You take a shape, you cut out fabric in that shape, and you apply it to the background fabric. And I'll go over that in a moment, how you can do that. And then you put little decorative stitching around the edges to cover the raw edges. So here is a character called Overall Bill. This was a leaf that I duplicated from photocopying it in my copy printer, enlarged it, cut it out. This is a flower I cut out of fabric. This is just a cup and saucer that I just freehand drew. And then this was used using heart shapes to create this clover. And then here is using another heart shape with two one on top of the other using decorative stitching. Most of your computerized sewing machines have decorative stitching on it. Maybe there's just a few, but maybe you have a machine that has a lot. I have a lot on my machines, and I use a lot of them all the time. So look in your user's manual and look up what those applique stitches are in your machine if you're not sure which ones they are. Here is an example of a satin stitch. On one of my machines, I have these three. They're already preset in there. But if all you have is just a zigzag stitch, you can change the zigzag stitch width and length to look similar to these right here. And then here are some others. These are like little blanket stitches. Then of course, you have the zigzag stitch that I talked about. You can tighten it up, make it wider, and then this is what it originally looked like, and then I moved it out to this. My favorite method for doing machine applique is to use this Pellon product called Light Easy Steam 2, and it's double-sided fusible webbing. So you have these sheets in there that are about 9 by 12 inches with blue grid lines on it. On the back, this is the back of the package, are detailed instructions on how to do this. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this, but I have many tutorials on machine applique. So you want to just scroll down below your YouTube screen, go to the description section, click on show more or the down arrow, and you will see video links appearing. So this is my fusible web. There's two sheets of paper, and in between the two sheets of paper is a thin layer of glue. So when you're going to use a template like this, you're going to draw on the blue grid line side. Now, I had to tape two sheets together because this is big. So I taped it on the back side where there is uh, no lines on it, and then traced around it with a pencil. After you've traced around your template, you're going to go out about a quarter of an inch and cut around your design. After you've got it cut out, remember I'm not showing a lot of detail, 
you're going to remove the paper off the back and just be careful you're not lifting the glue off with that paper. Then you take this blue grid line side, put it on the back of your fabric and finger press it all the way, all over, real good. Then with scissors, go ahead and cut on your drawn lines. Remember, if you want a lot of detail on how to do this, check for the link below your YouTube screen. So then after you've gotten it on your fabric, then you're going to remove the blue grid line paper, place it on your background fabric, this cream colored, and then use a hot iron with steam to fuse it on. So this is what mine look like when, I'm when I was done. I used a medium uh, satin stitch on the edges, except on the feet down here, I used the narrow satin stitch. But when I was done, it, it just didn't look complete to me. So on this part right here, this is called the waddle. I had to look it up because I was going to call it the thing. Well, nobody knows what that means, so it's waddle, W-A-T-T-L-E. I filled it in with several rows of satin stitch so that it would look solid. On my machine, I have a decorative stitching that creates a little chain of circles. So I just used one and then stopped stitching, so that's for the eye. When it was done, it still, I felt something was missing and that was a wing. So if you're interested, later in the, vi in the tutorial, I will go over some tips on how to draw this wing. The previous method is just one way you can use this turkey template to create a design. That's a very basic design. Now I'm going to show you how you can take this same template and divide it up into sections. So normally I would trace around this on thin cardstock, but just for this demonstration, I'm just going to use paper. So place your template on there and trace around it. Now I want the feathers back here to be a different color, the body to be another color, the little waddle here will be another color, and the feet will be another color. So here on this line here, I just freehand drew this line. Now I would use pencil, so if it doesn't come out very good, you can erase and fix. Now on the first example, I was using 100% cotton quilting fabric. In this example, I'm gonna be using felt. And you can buy felt in sheets like this. Sometimes they have it at Walmart, I haven't seen it lately but you can get it at places like Joanne Fabrics and Crafts. You can also buy this in bolts, off the large bolts. It's usually a higher grade of felt and is more expensive, but these are very inexpensive. So to get it ready to cut out all of the different pieces of felt, you want to go ahead and cut here and of course all the way around the edge. Then down here by the foot, you're going to cut right up here. And then over here on the waddle, you're going to cut right across there. So this is what it looks like when I cut out all of the different colors. Now, how are you going to stitch this down? Usually when you cut, do felt artwork, you usually attach it to other felt, background felt. So it won't fit on these little squares here. So if you're gonna put it on felt that's gonna be the background, you need to buy the felt off of the bolt. But the decorative stitching you can use, you can do a straight stitch around all of the edges, close to the edge, on all of the pieces. Let me show you a sample. This is my first felt project I ever did, and I do have a tutorial on it. But look at how close the stitching is to the edge. Now you can use the same color or a different color. It's really up to you. 
If you enjoy doing hand embroidery, this is a perfect project for you. You can use those stitches that you know and be able to apply it to that design. So I don't do a lot of embroidery, I'm not that great at it, but this is a sample. You could do a blanket stitch around the edges and then to create uh, the veins in a leaf, I just did a back stitch on all of these. There are many ways that you could adhere it to your background fabric. And often people will do, which is my favorite way, is just turn it over on the back and just squeeze out little balls of glue here and there to hold your pieces in place. Then let it dry and then do whatever stitching you desire. I use these templates by June Taylor and they're a variety of sizes of circles. I've been using them for probably 25 years and I just love them. So I'm going to use the 3 inch circle and the 1 inch circle. What I like about these circle templates is there are lines going through it to show it where the center is. So I drew a half circle to start. Then place the five inch line at the very top of the half circle. Draw a line from the edge of the half circle down to the number two. And then over here, draw a line down all the way to zero here. Then to draw this line, you're going to make it the same length starting up here and drawing to number two and then come over here and starting at number two and drawing down to number three. Then take your one inch circle, place it up here and trace just halfway and then over here the same thing. And then I placed this one right about in the middle here, drew a half circle and a straight line down. And there you have your template. So I placed it right about here and then I took a fabric marking pin and drew around it. And the reason why I recommend a fabric marking pin is it's easy to remove it. This one requires water so I would just spray a little water on it if I didn't like the blue lines I drew. And there's also ones that are heat sensitive. The moment you hit it with a hot iron, it disappears. Here's one more suggestion. These were little kits. Remember, they're only a dollar and a quarter. They're felt. And I thought these are perfect. You could use these shapes that are already here, and it's very stiff, so it would be easy to trace around it. And you can use it for quilting fabric if you want to trace around that. It comes with the little face features. And I thought that these are perfect for applique projects. I hope you enjoyed this tip of the week and that you learned something new. The best way to get started in machine applique is just to start. That's the only way you're going to learn it. If you just sit and think about it, it's not going to happen. You actually have to do it. So start with a really simple design. Use old scrap fabric. Don't use any good stuff yet. And practice those applique stitches. Now, don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. And, and a reminder, check below your YouTube screen for those video links. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and happy sewing. If you like the Sewing Room channel, one of the best ways to show your support is to subscribe by clicking on that red subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And make sure you click on the bell so you receive notifications for all my new videos. I'm Cheryl, this is Manny, and this is Scotty. See you next time.